Hi, Les from Retired and Living the Dream, back in sunny Redcar in the northeast coast of England. <coughs> and the thumbnail, quite dramatic, I know, but not clickbait, it's what happened, and I'm going to go through the story of what happened. So here I am on the beach in sunny Redcar. I'm going to walk along the beach, and as you can see, the steelworks there in the background. Now apparently all that lot's going to be knocked down this month sometime so it'll make a better vista so you don't see all the steelworks. Over there is Hartlepool and all the, the windmills. Look at this beach. It's lovely. So I'm going to walk along the beach and I'm going to tell you the story as to what happened. Now for those people who've been watching my channel Sadly, you, you'll have seen that my stepdad died, so I came to England for the funeral. And it's, I've been back in England now for just over a week, and <coughs> what an eventful week that has been. Something that I wouldn't wish to relive again. So, 32 hours altogether from getting to my sister's house, from leaving my wife's farm in in Karat, uh, 32 hours, delayed on the traffic on the motorway because there was an accident, 13 hour flight to getting from London Heathrow up to the northeast red car by train, so 32 hours, long long time. So I was obviously tired and uh, got to sleep early on that night. Then I woke up with pains in my chest. Now I'm not knocking the health service or the NHS or the ambulance service. Don't think I'm doing that because I've, I'm full of admiration for these people and uh, absolutely top class service throughout. But anyway, I had uh, pains in my chest thinking, okay, it might have been because I was fell asleep on various chairs, on the train, on the plane and I thought it might have been indigestion so I took some Gaviscon nothing made the pain go away now I'm used to dealing with heart attacks when I worked in the fire service so our message was always if you have pains in the chest call the ambulance here's me talking about the same words pains in your chest call the ambulance did I call the ambulance at first no because it wasn't happening to me Again, one of their mother messages. Who believes it's happening to them? Who believes that they're having a heart attack or with chest pains or whatever it could be? You're just gonna walk it off and that's what I did for an hour, an hour and a half, walk around the room. This was at 12 o'clock when it all started. So I called the ambulance, explained to the lady on the phone what was wrong. And she said, you're a category one. <clears throat> but she said we've had that much um, stress in the system tonight she said it's going to take at least an hour before the ambulance arrives category one category one call is 18 minutes so the ambulance service told me later on and after two hours the pain started to go away thankfully but still after two hours the ambulance hadn't turned up so three hours later, I get a call from the NHS nurse dealing with the ambulance calls. Three hours. The operator on the phone could obviously hear my voice and my, the stress part of it had gone a little bit. And um, so therefore I wasn't in, a, in such an emergency because the symptoms had gone down a bit and the pain had gone. But she said the ambulance is still coming. And an hour later, which was four hours in total, that's when the ambulance came. So I got to the hospital and then it took another five hours to see a doctor. I was initially seen by the, the nurse within 30 minutes of getting there for five hours before I got to see a doctor. Long time. And uh, at 4.30 in the morning when I was at the hospital there was maybe 30 other people in there also 
Four police officers with two offenders who've been fighting broken noses and battle scars. But no wonder there's no police on the streets because they're sat in the hospitals. These people have been battling, so they're entitled to see medical attention. And they did, they were at the hospital. So four policemen off our streets for five hours whilst they waited for medical treatment. Crazy. So anyway, I seen the doctor, then they sent me up to emergency daycare and they did some further tests on there, they did the x-ray, the blood tests and uh, so all, in, all in all I was in hospital for nine hours and they seemed to think it wasn't a heart attack, it might have been a, a blood clot in my lungs because of the 32 hours thrombosis but they weren't 100% sure so they were going to send me for a CT scan further on during the week. So they just gave me some tablets to thin my blood down in case it was a clot. And then, <clears throat> and then after leaving the hospital, I had a, a severe chest infection for three days. Just laid in bed, couldn't get up, felt really, really ill. And then I attended my stepdad's funeral. I just went to see the service and then came straight back home, went back to bed again. I was that ill. So I then went for the CT scan. CT scan, again the treatment for then and the quality of service is just number one. So the CT scan, they said the blood test came back okay, so they just wanted to verify that the CT scan just to clear up any any doubts but then I get to the news later on in the day with a CT scan and the nurse said to me on the phone she said it's not good Les your CT scan she said it verifies that you didn't have any clots but you've got emphysema emphysema on the lung and she asked me how many did I smoke a day for cigarettes. I said, I've never smoked. So then they asked us about my job, blah, 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 about medical history. And they said, that's it, I've got emphysema now. Not curable. Only mild emphysema, but emphysema which will get worse over the years. And I said, oh, was that it? She said, oh, no, no, there's something else. She said, we found a cyst on your liver. Now she said it could be, be it could be benign, it could be uh, you know something that has been there for years, or it might have just appeared. So now I've got to go and see other specialists who are going to tell me what I need to do. So from a simple trip to the UK to put a few little niggles in my mind as to. My health wise because up until now I've been sort of fairly healthy all my life but am I duly over worried not really no because I'm 62 year old things are going to start going wrong with you but here I am in Redcar my hometown plenty of memories looking at various things around here I'm going to spend some time with my sister and the son and her their children over the Christmas and New Year period and then come back to Thailand with their uh, with no worries or very few worries because health wise <coughs> I'm not too bad I don't think I'm better off than a lot of other people but I just live life whilst you can this is another reason why I'm so happy that I retired at 50 years old because it's 62, I'm still not reaching reach, there. The wind. I'm still not reaching retirement age yet, which is normally 66. So I've managed to do all the things that I can in life for the past 12 years. So just imagine now with deteriorating health. So for those people who are thinking about retiring, retire as soon as you can. That's my advice. Live. Do whatever you can, when you can, because who knows what's around the corner.
So that's my little rant over. So from Les, retired and living the dream, I'm going for a cup of tea and a toasted tea cake. So I'm going to start doing some more videos now that I'm back into feeling healthy. So enjoy the videos. Bye for now.